Drinking it in While I'm drifting away Breathing you out of my lungs Up through the cosmos And out into space you are my oxygen, but you're gone, gone, gone. We've got decision time. We've just been talking for the last 24 hours about what to do. We're here in Tandabiti. We've been here kind of a week or so, um, but we are wanting to head south when we get a window. There is a window today to head south. On Monday and Tuesday, there's a big front coming up from the Southern Ocean and it's going to hit the west coast of Australia and it's going to come reasonably far up to where we are. The forecast last night was really bad for Tuesday in particular. I just did another check this morning and it's still really bad but it looks slightly less really bad. <laughs> but the main problem is there's nowhere to hide. That is the problem. There's good hiding places here. Down further south we're a bit more exposed and it means we're going to probably have to sit on anchor in 40 knots Plus, on a leeward shore, they're blowing onto the beach. However, free range have just came in last night actually. They've been up north, they've just got in last night here, had a quick chat with Troy and Pascal. They're going to head off this morning as uh, another boat, Blue Lagoon. I guess that's still their plan. I don't know if that's changed this morning. We'll have a chat with them. But uh, free uh, chasing Eden is going to stay here. They've decided to stay here. So we're going to go, well, what do we do? What do we do, Rachel? We're going to go and have a workout. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do. <laughs> we're going to have a workout, and we'll think about it. I'll and then clear we'll our minds. I have to say, right now, what's your gut? Oh, my gut feeling is we left the rubbish behind. Oh, we left the rubbish behind. We're going to get the rubbish. What's your other gut? My gut is we're going to be late for the workout, so we better get yeah. going. Go get the rubbish. We'll have to come back and get it. This is Rob, and I'm Rachel, and these are our boys, Finn. Declan and Ivan. We have sailed our catamaran Javelo across the Pacific Ocean. We would love it if you join us for the adventure. Decision made, Rachel. Decision made. I don't know if it's the right one. I really don't want to leave these guys. I really like it here. We know we've got a safe anchorage on the other side around Exmouth. Um, but we've got to get south. The question is do we do an overnight or try and go all the way to Shark Bay or do we call into Coral Bay, which we'd like to do. So we're making a decision to sort of uh, halfway house at the moment. Final call about exactly where we anchor tonight, or if we push on tonight, will be made tonight. <laughs> ah, I tell you, I feel really torn. Anywhere I go, I swear I can feel you. Dolphin! Baby, there is nothing I I've been talking to your ghost oh, You're the only one who knows oh, We were so close This is Rachel filming She started filming and then collapsed I don't know if she's got a bit nauseous or just having a Z Probably just having a Z I want to talk about Bob because Bob is great. Bob is our auto hound, and if we didn't have Bob, I tell you, life aboard this yacht would be very, very different. It'd be way less enjoyable and way more arduous. Went on passage. Uh, 
we pretty much sailed with Bob the Auto Helm the whole time. It's a Raymarine Auto Helm. It's so good. Um, there's a great setting. We're not on it at the moment. Uh, if Mr. Ibina up, I probably would think about it, but it's okay. It's pretty. The wind direction is pretty steady. Um, but you can set it to the wind angle the wind is hitting the boat at. So you can set the sails to that wind angle relative to the boat. And if the wind swings 10 degrees to the east, then the boat will turn 10 degrees to the east and the wind stays the same on the sails. The reality is the wind is constantly oscillating. So you might get the sail set up and trimmed to the perfect trim. Within 30 seconds, that trim is no longer as perfect as it was. Well, in this situation, the boat will just bear with that change wherever it goes. It does mean you, ch you cover more ground, but you're covering it with more efficient sail set. So in theory, you're probably going faster, but the big thing is it just relieves uh, any hassles of having to wind in sails and adjust them. When you know the general course is okay. I love it. The kids love it, Rachel loves it, and uh, we wouldn't, you know, just couldn't do it without it really. And we actually have a spear, we bought from Lusty and Blundell actually, we bought a spear one from them uh, in Auckland, because we just feel it's such an important piece of equipment, and um, highly recommend. If you're going to have a spear of anything on board, have a spear auto helm. So we've been sailing a few hours now. We took along nicely, we've got Robina up, and we've got, right now, we've got 9.5, 10 knots of apparent wind. Uh, the true wind is, I'm not 100% sure it's on the beam. If it gets up more than 11, 12 knots, we'll drop the sail. Uh, because although it is scheduled to drop off again, I don't want to be in a position where it gets up more than we're in control. So we will drop the sail, put up the main, and carry on from there. See right, it's back to nine knots now, apparent. So it's up and down a little bit. Watch the space. Yep. K1W1, roll six knots. Hey guys, how are you doing? Yeah, good. I'm just um, in the middle of, uh, we're just changing sails, so I'll cool. chat with you in a sec. I've just got to tidy up the lines a bit. Oh, sorry, I see you there too. Sorry, I'll let you go. You never know who you'll see. It's Maroo, free range sailing. Hello, Chris girl. Hello, how you guys going? How was your sail? Yeah, it's so, uh, whoa, we just had, oh, crikey jingo. I goes. think it's time to take our uh, sail down. We've been thinking about dropping the spinnaker, but it's uh, just the angle of the wind increasing the apparent, but it's sort of okay. Yeah, right. Did you guys have the spinnaker up the whole way? Did you have to motor at the beginning? No, we've got motored at all. I thought you might have done that. Cool. Yeah, we were just ticking along at about four knots and just, you know, waiting for the wind to fill in. It was fine. Have you decided where you're going to be Monday, Tuesday as a safe anchorage? I think we're going to be at Warner. So there's uh, speculating that, you know, potentially 40 knots and four and a half metre waves, or swells. Do you think it's going to be okay there, you reckon? We're just going to suck it and see. Um, we've never anchored there before, so see how we go. Okay, um, all right, well, we might, well, we were thinking of pushing on to Bateman. I think that's still the plan. I'll talk with the number one. <laughs> no worries. Well, I'm sure we'll see you again at some point in the next few days. Roger that. You're looking good out there. See you later. You guys too. I thought you might have done the whole thing under sail. That's pretty cool. Um, we'll see you soon. Safe sail to payment. Thank you. Storm's coming. Sky is swirling. Out on the sea. In trouble too deep. Tie the mast down. Say a prayer. So the last time we picked up the camera, we were coming into the passage just slightly north of here, half a mile north of here, and uh, we had some rollers come in following behind us. We just happened to pick a gap and barreled on in, no problem. Well, it was a bit hairy, but no problem really. It was then, pretty hairy. It was pretty hairy, but then these breaking waves, they were big waves, like 
I don't know, a couple of metre waves. And, um, and uh, boy, that would have been here if it had been breaking all around us. I think we would have been okay though. Anyway, this morning we had a lovely little uh, half a dozen, probably actually eight or nine squidlies were hanging around the anchor this morning, so we caught three. By squidlies, do you mean squid? Squid. Yeah. Yeah. I and caught one. Rachel caught one, I caught two. The first one I caught, I was carrying it from the bow down the side here, and it was down low, and I was holding the rod out, so it was a long way out, and then it just squirted, and this big chunk of and it landed right there, 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 and there, and there. And I didn't get to clean it for about five minutes because I was busy doing stuff, getting the second one actually. And um, you know, I came to wash it off and it's left a bit of a mark. Anyway, we've anchored here and this, we've been here a couple of days. Free range are just puttering off, they're puttering off uh, heading south to a place called Warra. We've got some bad weather coming uh, due to arrive uh, tonight. Hard to believe when the, to believe. it's so no. gorgeous right now. You look at this, but there's bad weather coming. 25 knots predicted, so it'll probably be gusting 30, 35 knots and potentially four to five meter swells out at sea. Which is actually a lot better than what, what was predicted. We Three got, or four days ago, it was saying 50 knot gusts. Yeah, we were slightly concerned about that. And the problem is there's nowhere to hide on Western Australia from a westerly, well, which is what we're getting. Well, there's coral reef here. So there's, but the question's where the coral reef will go, and we've chosen to go up to where Coral Bay itself is. There's lots of coverage, lots of shelter there. We can drop the pick there, there's good sand holding. I just spoke with another cat that sailed, motored through here. They said, oh no, there's some good sand up there. You can grab a, grab a spot. Um, and, and we've got good internet. We've got access to the township there too. Um, so What's not to love? Yeah. Tides churning and the current is much stronger now. One and a half meters under the keel here. It's very shallow. A little bit scary, but we're okay. We're okay. Isn't the blow meant to be coming through here tomorrow? Yep. Coming through a little bit tonight and then tomorrow night as well. So that's the mooring boy. Yeah, it's, I can see it says 12 meters. So that's not going to work. So we're going to have to anchor. It's hard to believe there's going to be a storm this evening. Hard to believe, alright. That looks too perfect. It's at 44, it was up to 44 just then. Yeah. Uh, it could have been higher. But rain! We've got rain! <laughs> Oh my goodness, we haven't seen rain for I don't know how many months. Yeah. Three, three months at least. Oh, at least. Yeah. But, oh, um, it's early. But I've got my makeup on. <laughs> the thing is, um, she's actually holding well, isn't she? Yeah, it is. And there's, yeah, there's no swell. Yeah, no, the swell is a big thing. But that just shows what the that reef is doing such a good job. Yeah. We're so pleased to see the rain because all our lines, all the nooks and crannies on the bimini um, is full of iron ore dust from damp here. Now, now it's raining, it's washing that down. Probably won't get all of it, we'll probably have it for months. Any time it rains we'll be seeing iron ore dust. But it's good to be getting some of it. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye, good riddance. And the tender's still there, that's good. And the tender's still there, yeah, it would have been a good idea to bring that in, wouldn't it? Uh, well, you know what, There's, I've got two schools of thought on that because it's extra weight on the boat, which means extra weight on the anchor, so, you know, yeah. It's still pulling on the boat, surely, that's well, extra weight Well, yeah, that's that true, yeah. Which is the worst, I don't know. Yeah. It's getting washed too. Yeah. It's still there, oh. we're still here. There's no better time to be heading into town. We're going to go into Coral Bay Township in the middle of the storm. It's uh, 34 knots. 
out there. <laughs> and I kind of, we're, we're leaving uh, Declan and Ivan on board. Um, we've just got to go and see some people actually, because they're leaving today. And Actually, um, why are we going to see them? Rob's dropping off his book. They gave him, he bumped in some, to some Kiwis when he was in town yesterday getting some provisions and they gave him a lift back yeah, to the very kind. dinghy dock. So he's dropping in a book. And why not? It's only 34 knots outside. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get soaked, not on the way in, on the way back, because it's lovely. We'll be going with the wind yeah. on the way in. So, just working out whether we're crazy or not to leave. Now it's just started raining as well. Yes, okay, I am less uh, inclined to go for this run. It's 35 knots, 36, 37. I'm gonna stay. Right. Uh, Rob can go. Right. I just wanna just make sure that the boys are okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty pretty wild actually. I think yeah. it looked like it was trending down. Now look. Well, maybe they were, maybe we're just that's just a little. It is trending down. Bit, uh, gusts coming through, but hmm. yeah, it probably is. But it was 40 earlier. We hadn't had 40 for hours. I thought it was like it was sitting at 24 there for yeah. like 10 minutes. And I thought, it oh, was okay, sitting at 20 good. in the mid 20s. Now it's gone back top. up again. Yeah. So. Righty go. Okay. Whoa, nice is that, Rob? <laughs> so elegant, graceful. <laughs> you don't need a motor. What? You what? just drift there. Yeah. Yeah. As Rob braved the elements on his trip into town. Declan embraced the conditions, harnessing the wind's power for a session on the kite. Look at that, 32 knots. And Declan, Declan's out there, oh my gosh. If you enjoyed this episode, please comment, give us a thumbs up, and best of all, share it. It helps us heaps. Come on, eat it so bad.